Hello Summoners and welcome back to another Pro Guides video. My name is Nathan Ng and today we'll be talking about the best champions to main on patch 13.11. In this series we have a list of 3 champions per role, compiled by our lead team of challenger players and analysts that are strong and not too contested. This makes them great to pick up since you're likely to get your hands on them and they're not very likely to be nerfed anytime soon. Every single patch, and there's going to be a lot of them, we're offering up a nice little bag of 11,525 RP. Entering just takes 3 quick easy steps, click the link in the description sign up for a pro membership, and comment your pro guide's username down in the comment section below. You won't find a better deal anywhere. So what are you waiting for? Go pro now. All right, let's get on with this guide. As usual, we'll start things out in the top lane. Our first pick here in this patch is Maokai. Even if you're not going to main him, this is a champion that everyone should at least put some games on to learn him. He's super easy to play, so once you have him down, it's really easy to get consistent results. With his point and click root and impossible to mess up ultimate, he sets up ganks and engages fights really easily. But he's also not just a CC slave for the team. Maokai does a pretty decent amount of damage and has some pretty good outplay potential in his kit. So you can always put in the work in the side lane and be a threat on your own in team fights. The second top laner that we have for you is Singed. Singed, while mechanically very easy is actually one of the higher mastery curves for the top lane. That's because the only way to play him is constantly be on the verge of inting. From laning to proxying to team fight, everything you do with Singe is all about baiting your foes in and making them dance to your tune. If you're new to him, you're probably going to have some less than optimal results at first, but once you limit test enough, you'll be carrying games in the most obnoxious ways possible. Another really annoying way to play games is being a perma split pusher. Who better for that than Yorick? The thing about planting yourself in a side lane for an entire game is that no matter how well you're doing, you're still putting pressure. If you're fed, you can roll over your opponent and kill turrets, even with them in lane, and if you're the one feeding, you can force your opponents to check you in lane. If they leave and try to use their lead to win fights, you'll be taking their base, and you'll just be able to catch up. By the way, for the runes here, we'll go with Comet since it gives you the best lane phase, but if you really want scaling, Conqueror gives you way more scrapping power later. Comet is just sort of a more reliable option, but it does partially come down to preference. Taking a look now at the jungle, our first pick is Volibear. His last rounds of buffs have left him in a pretty decent spot. He's not quite as god tier as he once was last Last season, but honestly, that's a good thing. He's rarely contested, so you'll basically always get your hands on him. Honestly, I think his stats are a bit lower than they should be. Folly is really easy to play, but not nearly enough people use his ultimate to actually force tower dives like they should. Being dove and losing a sacked wave to tower after is one of the most tilting things in solo queue, and when it comes to being dove by Volibear, there's no real room for counterplay, so abuse this as much as you can. Bonus points if you coordinate the dives with your mid laner to get them ahead as well. Next up, we've got Ramus. Back on 13.7, right through a nerf out to his dub, W and left it at that, but Ramis has defended his position as one of the best junglers in the game. Like Maokai in the top lane, even Shroud has caught on with Ramis as well. The damage amp just gives crazy value, both when you go for picks or engaging teamfights. That being said, you can definitely go for Jack's show in games where you need the durability. The third jungler for this patch is Warwick. Warwick is a very, very beginner friendly champion, being probably the very best for entry level players, but don't let that super low skill floor fool you. Warwick does really well at all levels of play, with there being multiple one tricks that regularly hit Grandmaster and even Challenger with him. Most jungle carries are squishy, meaning that you need a good team comp to set you up to do well. Most tank junglers just lack the damage to actually carry once the game starts reaching those later points. But Warwick, and the build that we have here for him, is a perfect mix of both. He's super durable, with his innate healing and damage reduction from his E, making him just as hard to kill as an actual tank. All the while, he does plenty of damage, easily able to shred through whatever target you're able to get a hold of. Have you ever asked yourself after a bad game, what am I missing? or sought help from impatient friends, or browse desperately for answers that only bring up more questions, your self-doubting days are over with Discovery, the first game-focused AI. Discovery is trained on the world's leading esports athletes to be your everyday personal coach. That's right, Discovery can help you improve your gameplay by giving you tips and strategies to take your game to the next level. Get started at ProGuides.com. Now for the mid lane, we'll lead off with Vagar. There should always be a sense of balance with hyper carries. If you're going to scale super hard, you should be really weak early. But Vagar doesn't really care about any of that. He may not be the most oppressive laner, but he is a very safe one. You're able to rack up those Q stacks in just about any matchup, and with the super balanced combo of Seraphs and ROA, later on, you're a glass cannon that isn't really glass at all. In fact, you're pretty much impossible to kill. Meanwhile, you one-shot anything that isn't a full tank that gets caught in one of your combos. Also, if you don't need a Zhonya's, don't build it. There are more 
and fun options. You can go for Magi's for a huge boost in your AP, Cosmic Drive to spam more, or if you really like to spice things up, grab a Shiv. Remember, this was added back as a crit item for ADCs, but it also has a fat AP ratio on it. So Vagar can actually use it pretty well. Regardless of the meta, I think Diana is a champion that anybody could consider making their main. That's because, unlike most assassins, Diana has absolutely godlike team fighting. In fact, you don't even have to play her as an assassin at all. You can do Bruiser variants, swapping your mythic to Jack Show, and the rest of your core to Demonic Embrace and Nashers, making you super beefy and giving you good DPS in longer fights. Personally, I prefer the Glass Cannon variant. There's nothing more satisfying than absolutely one-shotting the entire enemy backline in a split-second combo, but find out what works for you. The last mid laner to focus on today is Garen. He's truly the best lane neutralizer in the game. If you're somebody that really struggles to deal with volatile matchups against assassins, where one death means that they just run over you the rest of the game, trust me, you'll want to pick up Garen. He absolutely wrecks any other melee champions, making it impossible for them to play the lane and also shutting them down in fights later on. You may think that Garen would struggle against ranged champions, but they're no sweat either. The combination of his passive, second wind, and door and shield means that you can easily melt waves with his E, then sustain up the poke that you take while doing it right after. For the build here, we have your standard damage into kind of tanky thing going on, but that's not the only way to play Garen. Most people think that Garen falls off, and he kind of does. At least, he does if you don't keep building up damage. You can do a more high risk, high reward build by going a glass cannon build, with PD and Mortal Reminder coming right after Stridebreaker, then Cleaver, and whatever you think you need last after that. Moving things down to the bot lane, the first carry that we have here for you is Misfortune. Despite the nerfs to Yumu's patch, we're pretty sure Lethality MF is still going to be the truth. Even if Yumu's does end up a little bit too weak, Duskblade will be a really strong alternative. This build is definitely more spell casty and doesn't do great against super tanky teams, so be sure that you're paying attention to select and swap to a press the attack page and go crit if the enemy team has a stacked frontline. Our second ADC is Twitch. While Stormraiser first item on Twitch has definitely been good for him, he's also been doing super well with other core builds, so you won't really be affected by the nerf. This Bork into Kraken build is great for bursting down people out of stealth, so you can be really assassin-y in the mid game and transition to the standard Hurricane and IE that makes Twitch such a disgusting team fight. Alternatively, there's a Ginsu's shift build that you can go if you're really lacking in magic damage. Or if you really just want to be a big AP carry, you can lock in Karthus. If you were to average out every bot laner's win rate over the past few years, it'd probably be really hard to find anybody that beats out Karthus. He's pretty consistently somewhere between 54 and 55% win rate. But because he's not that popular, Riot just sort of doesn't care. He neutralizes any lane, scales insanely hard, and in team fights, he don't even need peel. Just die and do damage anyway. He's literally to die for. Who wouldn't want to play such a stress-free champion? All right, let's round things out with our support picks, starting with Rakan. This super flexible champion fits really well into any comp, making him a great pick to main. When you combo with him properly, his CC chain makes him one of the best engaged champions in the game. But he can also be played super defensively, utilizing that same CC to protect and peel for carries instead. His builds are just as flexible. The standard enchanter-ish build that we have for you is great, but if you're a main frontliner, you can build way tankier, or go for a utility damage amping build with items like Even Shroud and Zeke's. We've been preaching about how OP Annie is as both a mid laner and a support since a rework, but this time, we're talking about her with a slightly new build. We usually recommend an airy rune page, but now we've got this glacial one. Combined with the new Echoes of Helia and the no longer a mythic Imperial Mandate, which is a fountain of utility in teamfights, be absolutely sure to run Fonts of Life, since it works with Rallies to proc your Echoes, so you never waste your stacks. Finishing off our list, we have Zyra. If you're somebody that likes to utterly destroy this lane, well, the pick is for you. No one is as lane dominant. She has tons of AoE damage to help shove the wave, and the range to poke out opponents under their tower as they try to farm. Post six, she also has some of the best all-in power that you'll find in any support. You can even turn many jungle ganks into net wins for your side if you're good at landing your full combo. The best part is Zyra isn't some early bully that falls off. In fact, she even gets better if you play her out of lane, with her poke and massive zone control being huge for winning team fights around objectives. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. Do let me know what you think in the comments below, and I can't wait to see y'all again next time. And you know the drill. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a wonderful day. Peace.